Hello, my soccer universe. Well, I have not been wearing a lot of Milan shorts this season, so I better take the chance. This is, of course, the 797, 98, 96, 97. Probably more, also 97, 98. Um, by Lotto, which I'm wearing because it's very similar in spirit to the one that they're wearing now where one side is red, the other one is black. Here is at least the color a little bit. So, yeah, I like this style, but this splitting of the colors, not exactly my stuff. And let's talk about Milan. I said, I'm not going to watch it because of my wife. My wife said, yeah, come here on the couch. Let's cuddle and you can watch. I love her dearly. Absolutely. So I, of course, brought the kids to bed so that she has some peace as well. So I watched only from the 15th minute on and let's, I, re I really want to start there and then I'll let Les go there. I mean, I actually only watched two games really with full attention and I saw a whole lot of pieces of other games. Watch some highlights now. Milan. <laughs> yes, they got a win. But boy, did they try hard to not win. Uh, I think I cannot say it any way else. The first half Atrocious, absolutely atrocious. And when I saw the lineup, I couldn't understand it. You again have Bilia in there. Uh, who I understand. I mean, he is probably somewhat a leader uh, in the dressing room. He has a lot of experience. I mean, he played a World Cup final. Uh, but that was basically the last time that he actually was a great player, I have to say. Uh, I find him rather slow. And that fits to the Milan style. I have to say, because Milan is playing super slow. <laughs> Just horrible. Um, anyway, he was in there, then um, he takes Leao out uh, in, uh, in favor of Bonaventura, Jalanoglu, and Piantec on front. And then Donnarumma is injured and Peperena has to play. I mean, uh, what more to really make me wonder, uh, has the manager lost it? And seemingly he has. I didn't realize that Lasse Schöne was actually playing for Genoa. I thought he's still at Ajax. So that was, for to me, a surprise. Why would you leave Ajax for Genoa? Is Genoa really uh, paying you? Or you just uh, Ajax threw you out, despite you actually being a good player for them last season? I don't know what was happening. Anyway, uh, First half, I have to say, Genoa was better. They get a free kick that Lasse Schöne takes. Yes, it has a slight swerve in there, but Pepperina still has to have that one. At least bounce it away. He's right there and the ball comes here. Typically, typically for Milan this season, honestly. And, I, you know, I was almost at the level of not caring too much. I mean, I never can really not care, but I said, okay wife's birthday. Milan is bad. I don't expect anything from them. Well, second half, uh, maybe some reason came to the to Giampaolo because Gialanoglu out, who showed nothing. Piontek out, who also showed nothing. And I have to say, number nine is cursed at Milan. I don't believe that much in curses, but the last number nine that was a good striker was Pippo Inzaghi. Since then, with 19, he scored Curiosity. He has now number nine, and so I honestly take the 19 from Theo Hernandez and then uh, see where this is going. It's really not worth it playing around with this number nine number nine the million anymore. When you're established, maybe, but not at this very very moment. Anyway. Uh, speaking of Theo Hernandez, uh, early in the second half, you know, we had Sepaqueta come, come coming, we had Leao come coming in, so really, that I liked, to be honest. Uh, and then, quick free kick, uh, Theo Hernandez runs to the box, uh, suddenly accelerates inside the box a little, little bit more, almost goes to a touchline, puts the ball on goal, and between the goalkeeper and the post, it goes in from a super cute angle, 1-1. And Milan suddenly had life and Paqueta was a life wire that really caused some trouble. Uh, and Leao, of course, too. And Leao had a wonderful um, move going into the box, but suddenly uh, seemingly lost the ball. Uh, the chance was then wasted by Paqueta, but VAR 
before taking the corner, Var comes up and it's very clear. I mean, from the first review, you could see that the ball touched the hand of the defender. Uh, why it took them three minutes? That to me is a little bit uh, crazy. The referee was not, was a little bit out of sorts, I have to say. Especially, I mean, he already gave a red red card for uh, Saponara, who seemingly switched in game last night um, in the first half. Now he gives the penalty, and I have to say the red card for the Genoa defender I thought was a little bit harsh. Um, I think a yellow could have done it. But okay, penalty, I didn't complain. Casey makes it 2-1, and I'm saying to my wife words that I was about to regret. If they lose this game now, one man up, one goal up, then you should stop playing soccer. And boy, did they try hard. I mean, first Leao has another good move, but then... I really have to say what bugged me the most is that you're up against a side that is by no means better than you and you cannot do anything. You should make a third goal there. They're not doing that. I, I'm, I'm, I have not seen Milan really uh, clearing an opponent off the field in a long time. And yeah, it Got tight again. 25 minutes they were only up by a man because then Calabria makes a stupidity. Lou loses Lou, the ball, pulls to the defenders, so second yellow, red, off the field he goes. Doesn't calm my nurse and I think um, I think my wife looked up, she was watch, watching a movie three minutes before that red card and she said, ah, 2-1 still. And I said, yeah, plenty of time for them to mess that up. Wise words. Uh, Milan controlled the game, but I have to, have to say Genoa then had some chances and there was a bicycle kick that was not coming anywhere. But then in the 89th, uh, nice through ball. Uh, and then the Genoa attacker, attacker sees that Pepperin is coming up. Pepperin is going like this, but he takes a dive. And despite war, it results in a penalty. And I said, okay, this is exactly what we need. But... Peperena for once steps up, saves the penalty, Milan hangs on to a win, but there was another red card given for a reserve player, this, this time for Milan, Samu Castillejo. I think the referee was very loose with the cards and completely lost control of the game. Uh, not the best thing. Also, the performance by Milan, yeah, maybe this is a win that will give you some conf confidence, but now we have the international break, lots of time to work. If I was giving Giampolo, this was the last chance, I saw too little. I gotta be honest with that. But yeah, Milan gets the win. Uh, in Serie A, I saw a little bit of Verona against some Tantor, but it was enough to see the 1 0 for Verona uh, late, late on the end, end the second. Uh, Sampdoria is also a little bit in trouble. Um, so Verona wins that 1 2 0. Uh, but the best game yesterday that I watched, uh, and I think I made a good choice, I put. At four o'clock yesterday, I decided to not watch Germany, although there was quite some interesting stuff happening with Bayern losing at home to Hoffenheim, Freiburg, Dortmund 2-2. Then Schalke could have uh, grabbed the lead in the table. No, they get a late last minute equalizer before hitting the post. So that was great. That was the only Hall Halles that I saw. So uh, today, I think it's Wolfsburg has a chance um, to take the... Lead, let me quickly check. There are two teams that can actually uh, overtake Bayern. Uh, Wolfsburg and Gladbach, of all teams. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, Glad Gladbach playing at home at Augsburg and uh, Wolfsburg against Union. So it does not seem impossible. Leverkusen Leipzig also won one. So I mean, yesterday uh, there were two, a few teams that could have overtaken Bayern that lose at home and they, they don't, don't manage. So... Um, not holding, holding a breath for them. It might be that Bayern is still on top of the uh, table. No, but Premier League, I had um, Liverpool Leicester on the main screen, and then I said on the small screen, I put um, the other, the one versus two between Real Madrid and Granada. Uh, and it was really the Liverpool game was that much better. I had the feeling from the from, from game because um, Granada came back into the game. They were down 3 0. Uh, actually, Real Madrid for once was convincing in attack, I have to say, especially this uh, new guy Valverde. Quite nice, nice pass for Bale to Benzema to make it 2-0 and a screamer by Modric to make it 3-0. But um, again, goalkeeping errors, Areola. 
uh, was playing, he caused a really stupid penalty. He wanted to kick away the ball, but didn't really realize that the attacker is coming his way and he hacks him down. And then uh, Granada, even with a um, um, dead ball situation, makes it 3-2, but in the end... Um, James Rodriguez gets the 4-2, but yeah, it was convincing by Real Madrid going forward, but on the back line as well. And Granada kind of showed, you know, we deserve being somewhat up there. So uh, that was also good to see uh, that they did not get annihilated like other teams that will talk a bit about. Premier League now. Liverpool as a city. Uh, it was the first time that I really watched Liverpool, and I have to say, I really like what, what I see. I mean, I... I also like Leicester. I mean, you could see that Leicester is probably a good, good team and I could very well imagine them finishing in top four this season. Uh, maybe even best of the rest behind the big boys. Uh, given how the others are, maybe they have a fight with Arsenal for that spot. But really, I Liverpool dominated the game. Um, had chances, uh, but it took a really nice through ball from uh, Milner. That pass was a beauty. I mean, it along the um, line and it curls in right into the run of Manet around the round defender Manet is through and goal makes it 1-0 uh, in the second half I think Liverpool felt a little bit too safe they just failed to make the 2-0 and then in the 80th you know there was a time like 20 or 30 minutes uh, in the uh, uh, second half I really thought Liverpool is just toying with them and yeah Alarm bells were ringing from the last game um, on Thursday. Just didn't make the 2-0. Uh, they had plenty, plenty of chances, namely Mohamed Salah needs to make it 2-0. Um, and so you let Leicester back in the game and uh, Madison makes it 1-1. A uh, really nice effort. At that point I thought, yeah, this is nice in a way because Leicester really uh, fought hard to stay in the game. But then when, then they, they put in uh, chances and it was like 15-3 to for Liverpool or something like that. And then I said, no, this is not deserved. Uh, maybe, live, but how can Liverpool find a winner? <laughs> They found a winner through a penalty. Um, and again, this was pretty clear. Albrighton had it all cleared. He had the ball and then he's playing around and Mane is just pressing and gets the ball. And Albrighton, I can see, he wants to kick the ball away. However, in that kicking motion, he does not hit anything of the ball. He hits Mane. And yes, he takes a fraction of a second to then uh, fall to kind of embellish on the referee because otherwise the penalty would not have been given. But it's absolutely right that the penalty was given. They look at the VAR and yeah, this was not a dive. This was a clear penalty foul. Yes, Mane was falling afterwards. I I take that, but I think it was rightfully the right result. And then Milner puts it into the net and it is 2-1 for Liverpool in stoppage time who hang on and get there. How this is, is the 8th win, 8th win out of 8. So, great start to their season. Today, Manchester City has to play catch-up. The big storyline, of course, is Spurs. I saw the highlights. Uh, Yoris making a goalkeeper mistake and breaking his elbow in the follow-up. Horrible. I mean, I'm shivering when I see it. They lose 3-0. I mean, yes, they were probably pro 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 shocked by that in 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 injury because whoever was there, they, they just turned around discussing if you see the replay. It doesn't look right. Spurs is a mess. Spurs is a mess. Uh, another interesting result is so Aston Villa trashing Norwich City 5-1. I have to watch Premier League highlights today, but I don't know how I will uh, get to that. So yeah, uh, Liverpool strong. Uh, City has to play against Wolves. Probably they will win that one and then it still remains five points between the two big foes in England. Um, Spain. I then watched um, to keep. I then watched PSG against um, Angers. But uh, before that, I quickly was uh, Spain. I saw a little. I saw some of Valencia against Al Alaves. A two-one win for Valencia. Uh, they a really nice goal to make it one 0 by Maxi. Uh, they made it a two 0 through Parejo. A kind of face when uh, Al Alaves who played in dark pink. We're going forward. But um, otherwise, pulls one back, but uh, game was more or less done. Don't, 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 don
I saw PSG Angers. Uh, I actually thought this might be an interesting one. That's while well, Val was when Real Madrid, the wonderful Madrid goal. When Real Madrid made 3 0, I switched over to that game. But this went, this was even worse in a way, although uh, the soccer was even better by PSG. They really could convince um, and had a great performance. I think Angers, there was a little bit nerves there. Sarabia makes a wonderful move. Yes, he was a little bit more accompanied than really uh, taking out. Makes a wonderful move, 1 0 at the time, and Akari should have made it already. Uh, goal. Then there was a big chance where. Uh, it could have been 1-1, but completely moved that one. Icardi in his 37th, after another nice move, makes it 2-0. Yes, he was not well marked. And then Idrissa Gay makes it 3-0. And then it's the big Neymar show, who actually played very well before that already. Uh, who m Two saves on him, but in the 9-9, he gets his goal after a nice assist by Chupa Monting. I have to say, PSG looked strong. I uh, saw a little bit more France this time as well. Uh, while waiting for the Milan game, I just put on, I just saw the horrible jerseys between Montpellier and Monaco. Uh, Monaco in mint, and what was Montpellier was, was almost a purple or whatever. I, I don't understand that. French uh, jersey, jersey review probably coming soonish. I don't know exactly when, if I should do it before the international break or after. Let's see how I will. Uh, go about that and I saw also the highlights of Nantes against Nice where Nantes really dominated. It was actually a nice jersey matchup. Yellow against the, the Sampdoria jersey of Nice, although I don't understand it. I mean, Nice could have also played in their first jersey there. So, minus points for that. Um, late winner for Nantes. Yeah, that was the... I also saw the last two minutes of Osasuna against uh, Villarreal that ended 2-1 for Villarreal uh, for Osasuna. So they also, this the promoted side, has a good start. So that was a Saturday. Not sure how much a Sunday. I mean, I will watch the Inter Juve. I will watch Lask and then let's see what will be in between. Um, but yeah, it looks like a great uh, day. But yesterday, I have to say that both matches that I watched fully were exciting. One was just bad. The Milan match was not a great match. The Liverpool Leicester was a really good match. I'm very happy I saw that one. Anyway, let's see what happened on Sunday. Good morning, my soccer universe. All in Juventus gear. I have jacket. I have um, I have the jersey on. It was a great guitar with Italia yesterday. And although I went in, sort of, yeah, I want to see a good gold game between two teams that I don't want them to win the Scudetto. Uh, during the game I quickly realized, yes, I'm still more Juventus than Inter. So I don't even feel bad wearing this Juventus shirt, honestly. So there you go. Uh, I honestly... I heard so many previews saying this is gonna be a nil, a, a, a draw, maybe a high scoring draw and so on. And then I thought about it early, early in the season, Italian teams, pragmatists, da 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 da. It to me like a zero zero. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, right off the get go. Juventus attacked Inter and Dybala with a sensational shot. Uh, Amdanovic saw it late. Uh, I'm not sure if, if it would have gotten in otherwise, if you would have seen it on time. But great shot right in the corner in the fourth minute and it's already 1-0 for Juventus. And Juventus really um, took the game to the opposition. Um, with Ronaldo hitting the bar again. I mean, that game was uh, starting on fire, absolutely on fire. And after 10 damage, yeah, it should have been probably 2 0 Juventus, but Inter clawed itself back into the game to the credit. And with that, suddenly uh, they got some, I mean, it was not clear cut chances. But they then got a penalty um, because De Ligt made kind of a clumsy challenge forward where the ball hits first his hand and then uh, Lautaro Martinez's hand. Of course, he had it first, so yeah, VAR is gonna decide on the penalty there. 
that's what we got. Uh, I was slightly hoping not, because mostly because I I know the Licht is currently struggling in Italy, uh, and I don't want him to struggle that much. Um, I think he is he is really a great player, but he probably has to learn here a lot because. Uh, Let's hush how harsh I say it in the Netherlands. It really is more about position. I I I don't know what was it. It's more about position awareness. Whereas in Italy, it's more about athleticism or the or, or the other way around. Anyway, it is. Uh, it's uh, he is going in, in into a different world. I was actually thinking uh, more that it's the positioning. In the Netherlands, because of the uh, you know total football thing, but probably it's more the athleticism. And in Italy, the defenders are so uh, more into positioning, because uh, that that's the one thing. A great Italian defender is not the most physical presence, but the spatial awareness uh, of where they are. That's usually superior. But I might be wrong about that. Anyway, the Licht is struggling. Martinez steps up and slams it home. Uh, Czesny is there but has no chance and then came the 15 minutes of Inter uh, where they were the better team absolutely the better team uh, a little with chances I, I Lukaku being a constant threat Martinez and Lukaku switching around positions uh, Sensi and Barella I gotta say these were great acquisitions by Inter um, really uh, taking over midfield and then Stefano Sensi comes off and suddenly it is all Juve again and all Juve with Ronaldo taking again all the free kicks although uh, how many free kicks has he scored it's ridiculous it's ridiculous how uh, he's taking it over I mean he has to his credit I can clearly see that he is not the look at me player that he was at Real Madrid. He is a little bit more team oriented because you can clearly see that he's not as much um, demanding the ball. It's he's more looking to, uh, to put himself in position. Uh, but the players are still looking for him to get the ball too. But also, it has to be said, yesterday, especially late in the second half, he was showboating as only a Ronaldo can do. It was clear. This was the biggest game that he played so far this season with lots of people watching from all over the world. And he put in many flicks and tricks and whatever. He really tried to uh, show off right there. Uh, at least it was not as bad because then he usually did the sensible thing and gave the ball to someone else. Uh, but it was noticeable that he was, I don't think he was ticking off his players, but I'm sure he ticked off the coach because he stopped doing that in the second half altogether. But in this, in the last 15 minutes or so of the second half, Juventus took over and were about to eat into a life. I mean, Vecino came on for um, Sensi and from that moment on, Inter was struggling in midfield, big time. Uh, Ronaldo scored a second goal, a wonderful move, unfortunately, Dybala was offside. I mean, the ball was played to Dybala, who kind of back heels it back to Ronaldo, then takes a wonderful shot uh, and makes it 2-1, but yeah, Dybala was offside at that point. So yeah, um, at least Ronaldo is still celebrating after he scored and then comes the downturn because I really hate it when they're waiting to, and I understand that they're waiting uh, that the referee um, count it. Uh, but with all that, there was a lot of tension in the, in, in the game. The atmosphere was electric. Uh, when the players went to the tunnel at halftime, um, there was a little skirmish or whatever, lots of discussions. But at the beginning of the second half, it kind of all fizzled out a little bit. And at that point, um, I gotta say, then the game was really more into Juventus' hand again for the 50, first 15 minutes, but not really finding the breakthrough. And suddenly you could see uh, Inter needed to have the break to kind of reorient themselves first. Uh, let Juventus come, organize yourself, and then go out and strike again. And then uh, around the 65th or so, the game was 
it was anybody's guess who the game was going. I, I think at first Juve was again slightly better, but then it was um, quite open. Um, there were penalty uh, calls for a penalty on the inter side that yeah maybe but i think overall it was always all right um the decisions taken but the i gotta say the referee had a really really tough task at hand and rocky was very good a very good re referee with such a charged game uh he kept the calm and he could always rely on all the help that he needed, even if he made the uh, no, initially a wrong decision, although he, I don't think he made that many wrong decisions. I think as a referee in such a game, uh, he was absolutely outstanding. Uh, early pick from for the Euro final as Italy gets there, I have to say. So yeah, uh, and then just when I thought, yeah, it might end up in the draw that everyone said, um, Higuain, who came on a little bit uh, or, or earlier, gets a nice pass and puts it in. I mean, Dybala before already had a glorious chance, really nicely played, um, and then Igoin gets the ball and puts it in, in into net. And what a return to San Siro the last time. Uh, they said the last time that he played at San Siro was when uh, Milan lost to Juve, which I cannot quite believe. I mean, he got red carded after that, but maybe I think he played it. Whatever, it was kind of, the lesson he, he was on the big stage at San Siro, maybe it should be said. So yeah, uh, it ends 2-1 for you where the last gasp effort of Inter did not come to anything. It was an exciting game. It was truly an exciting game to watch. At the same time I also had Sevilla Barcelona on and it has to be said that uh, due to the war and the skirmishes and what the war, whatever, the Inter game got so much pushed back that the um, Derby d'Italia ended four minutes before Barcelona Sevilla ended. Um, I saw the goal, I mean, the first one spectacular by Suarez, although I'm almost, I have to say, uh, bicycle kick, yes, Semedo with a nice cross in, uh, but in, the, in, in a way, it's yeah, done their scene that I was not as, it was not as surprising. I mean, it was a near post, but yeah, it was spectacular. And it was after a while where uh, Sevilla had, had actually good chances uh, to get something. They, even right after the 1 0, they could have made the 1 1, but Luc de Jong, the other de Jong, couldn't convert. And then Barcelona ran riot. I think a 2 0 came from uh, Arturo Vidal with a slight hint of offside, but it was not. And um, a few minutes later, Dembele makes it 3-0 in a span of like 10 minutes or so. Barcelona scores three on Sevilla uh, to claim second spot. Messi in the second half puts in a free kick, his first goal of the season, I think. And yeah, Messi magic is back. So. Let's see where uh, Barcelona is going and where Sevilla is going. Uh, since, they, since they are already in Spain, um, Atletico Madrid really dropped the ball and got only uh, a nil-nil draw at Real Valladolid, who actually missed the penalty. I did not see much of that game, to be honest, but yeah. Uh, ends nil nil, and it's exactly how I predicted. We will have after this round, we have Barcelona and uh, Madrid in two and one respectively. So uh, it is very, very, very this. Boys is gonna be a great classical that will be coming up soonish, I think. Um, other big results yesterday. I mean, I told you what I watched in the in the evening. Uh, another big res two big results that I did not watch uh, were first of all Mönchengladbach beating Augsburg 5-1 and claiming top spot. So that's a big result, and it's so funny to me because Gladbach during the week in the Europa League looked horrible. Gladbach uh, in Europe. Nothing to talk home about. Absolutely nothing. Horrible form that they are not leading the Bundesliga. That doesn't really speak for the Bundesliga, I have to say. I mean, I saw the Bayern highlights. I think Bayern could have a claim, should have had probably a penalty uh, late in the first half. And I'm, not, I'm sure that the game would have 
gun di di differently and also you know after such a win at Spurs you tend to let it go. I still don't see anyone for Bayern winning there at that one but it's super tight at the top of the table because also Wolfsburg won 1-0 uh, and they are now in second spot so and Wolfsburg is one of th um, three unbeaten teams in the top five in Europe. Uh, the other one Juventus and of course Liverpool that we talked about. Speaking of Liverpool, they are becoming really now big favourites because Manchester City drops the points 2-0 uh, at home to Wolves, two late goals. Uh, that seems like City, there's something not, not right at the moment. In the Premier League, it seems Liverpool, then City, then the rest. Manchester United lose, man, man eventually lose to Newcastle. Um, if you're a United fan, you must be completely apathic, like I'm feeling for Milan at the moment. Uh, horrible. Honestly, horrible. What they are pulling. Uh, but what did I watch other than what I just told you? Of course, I watched my Lusk play against Hartberg, and I gotta say, uh, and I've tried to pull a picture of the stadium in Hartberg. It's kind of an old village stadium. It has uh, one big main stand and one smaller stand and then there's the athletics track around and then you can see a school in the background and within the curve of the athletic tracks on both sides they built additional stands to make it feel like more a soccer stadium which is especially funny on the um, uh, right side from the camera point of view because there uh, it's just a little thingy sta standing there but I gotta say what to me is kind of the most important here I'm I'm getting a little bit tired of all these spiffy new stadiums where you only see spectators around yes it's impressive to have such a big stadium but a stadium like Hartberg where, where in the camera perspective you're just on, on the midfield you actually see the village behind Hartberg is a town, so I shouldn't call it a village. Uh, but you see the church there, you see the hills where the uh, houses are growing up. It's actually quite pretty. And I have to say the same thing about the Riga Monti in Bergamo and some other stadiums uh, that I watch. I find it way more interesting when you can see a little bit of the scenery. I mean, if it's as picturesque as in Hartberg or um, Wolfsburg in other states is anyway you just see the rolling hills in the background um, I also think Norwich although this is a bigger stadium but you also see the church in the background that I actually enjoy much more I have to I have to say um, I want to see more of that and less of those then it makes like games watching from San Siro or the Camp Nou uh, way more attractive uh, more of that. <laughs> we need more small teams, or small stadiums. I know it's not that any 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 trade, but I have to say I really enjoyed that. I also yeah, should I say I enjoyed it. I mean the way Lask was playing, it was the same as in Lisbon. They dominated the opponent. I cannot find the net. I cannot find the net. I mean even going clear on goal, going in with a penalty, uh, cannot make it 2-0. And I it cannot even make a single goal. Uh, was a nice save, but it has to be said, said as well uh, on the penalty. Penalty slightly contentious because uh, it was from offside position. But in Austria, we see still not having VAR, and the efforts in Austria are going that we have one more season without VAR, and then VAR is coming. I find it highly ridiculous that a country like Austria. I understand we have small stadiums and then it's over there. Get far in the Bundesliga. I can't be that hard, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, there were some Hartberg players that were walking the line on the yellow red. Uh, they really were physically, but you know, us players also kind of physically, so maybe that's all right. Uh, but it has to be clearly said that. Uh, it was a little bit... A player should have walked, let's put it that way, from what I feel. Anyway, um, other than that, uh, first half ends goalless, kind of underwhelmingly. I mean, Lask is playing well, but cannot find the goal, and then it comes as it should come, Hartberg scores. 
in the uh, in the 56 or something like that. Fortunately, fortunately, uh, then the strikers are taken out. The other two that I find are actually worse come on and suddenly last finds the goals in the 64th round and the 69th. Um, Michael scores a score. Uh, Klaus should have made three more, but you know, uh, fortunately turned it around so quickly because it was really uh, glaring. I mean, you play well and you cannot make a chance and so Lask stays in uh, second place in Austria. Same time I had also uh, Roma Cagliari on, where against the run of play Cagliari gets a penalty, makes it 1-0, but a few minutes later score an own goal, then a huge uh, call by the ref that first Kalinic scores the winner in the last minute. Uh, close to the last minute, uh, but with a lengthy, really lengthy VAR review. Uh, they decided that Kalinic actually fouled the Kalir player, who then pushed himself into the goalkeeper. It was the right call, and Kalir hangs on to a 1 1 horrible jersey by Kalir. I said it in my Serie A jersey review. I really do not like these jerseys, uh, and I don't understand it. why can't they play in white. Honestly, didn't look good, the, the military look. Not mine. Absolutely not mine. And yeah, I, yeah, I saw also uh, Torino Napoli, but that was more or less a trailer in nil nil, so nothing to write home about. But I think Sunday had some good matches in there. Uh, I have a weekend where all my, my two favorite teams won. Cannot complain about that. And I got Two really nice top of the table clashes with Liverpool, Leicester, and um, Juve at Inter. Also, the results going my way. Although I have to, I have, 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 have to say, I was a little bit happy when Leicester scored the equalizer, but uh, I really want Liverpool to get the title. I really want Liverpool to get the title. Uh, Manchester City might have nicer jerseys, but. Now, if it's between Liverpool and City, I want Liverpool. But I understand. I mean, I have, in the office we have a big contingent of United fans. I can for, and they of course don't want anything of Liverpool. But yeah, uh, I understand that. I, it's similar to me. I mean, I don't know in Italy when I think Milan. I don't want Juve to win another. But should it really be Inter? No. Uh, one last now, this is uh, for the video program. You get, of course, tomorrow or on Wednesday. I have to see how I will manage uh, the big, just before the international break, the big breakdown of the big leagues with chances and so on. I uh, really want to do that because a lot, lot of things have happened. I um, will probably think that Liverpool should, should be our favorites to win the Premier League. That will be, for me, the most interesting to see. But I'm also interested to see how Real Madrid look like. Uh, I decided to not go for the videos and make the league uh, jersey review uh, now, just before the international break. I need a slight break from uh, making too many videos, so I decided to take it easy, easier. Um, also, I need to focus a little, 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 little bit of work, and we have quite some stuff at home to do so um, it will come it will come i may do it even before the europa league jersey re review because i want to probably get a few more europa league games in to have a full view of the jerseys because there are many smaller teams that you know i only can see in the europa league and that's why i need to look uh, there but yeah so that's the program we have now international break coming you of course will get a what uh, to watch for and I will do my uh, every day I will quickly talk of what we saw in the international break in Europe qualifying I will focus on Europe qualifying okay let me know what you watched what you thought about the games uh, yesterday or also on Saturday over the weekend which ones did you enjoy most uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this very long video and again I did it in two parts so we are scratching the 40 minute mark and yeah subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like that and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too 
Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.